Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me for a quick Linux video. Um, let's have a look at a few things you can do to manage your Vim RC a little bit nicer. Okay, so first let's pull up Vim. Um, I'm using NeoVim here, so it's actually my init.vim we're going to be looking at, but it, it's much the same idea. Okay, so I've aliased that to V in bash, just to save a few precious keystrokes. Okay, so to open up my Vim RC, I could do edit config nvim and then init.vim okay and that works fine um, I've got some lovely ASCII art there uh, just to remind us that it's still 1987 and this is a dialogue BBS that we're working on um, okay so that would open up my vimrc uh, but that's quite a lot of typing to do and we we do that quite often if you're the kind of person that uses vim then you're probably you're going to like to mess around with your setup fairly regularly if something annoys you or if you'd like to change some behavior or whatever um, so if we go down to my vimrc section down here um, and expand it, we can see that I've mapped two commands. Uh, the first one is bound with my leader key and then ev. Uh, by default, the leader is backslash, but I find that a bit of a pain in the ass on a UK keyboard, so I remap it to comma. Um, I've also seen uh, some people use space for their leader, uh, but I use that for something else that we'll, we'll see later. Um, so if I close this buffer and go back to an empty one, we can do that with colon bd, uh, buffer delete, I guess, I'm not sure. Uh, but then if I do leader ev, we can see that it pulls up my uh, my vimrc here in a vertical split. Um, but it doesn't interrupt my current work, because usually if you want to edit your vimrc like this, it's because of annoyance you've literally just found in a file you're working on. So if you can just do leader ev, um, it'll bring it up in a vertical split. You can fix whatever the problem is um, and then close it. OK, so if I've got the vimrc open, let's edit something. Let's go down to UI here um, and let's Let's turn off the cursor line. So if I change that to that, if I put an ampersand at the end of that, basically what that does is if you set with an ampersand, it resets it to the default. Um, so in that case, it turns the cursor line off. So if I then save and do leader SV for source uh, vimrc, then we can see the, the cursor line is turned off. If I uh, do it again, Save it, source it. Now we've got the cursor line back. Okay, so that's it's quite a good sort of time saver. Okay, now let's look at these sections that I've got going on. My my VMRC is very small by most standards, but it's still more than will fit on one screen. And with config files, you don't really need that much context from the surrounding sections. It's pretty localized, so I like to compartmentalize that and fold them down so I can move around the files easier. Um, it's not really that important what the sections are. Uh, the only thing I'd suggest is that your plugin uh, section here goes at the top um, because that can um, affect the way that the rest of the file uh, um, interacts. Okay, so if I open the uh, the section folding bit here, you can see that I have remapped um, ZA, which normally that toggles the folds, but I've remapped that to space um, just be just because I you know I like that. Um, Z capital M to close all the folds. Okay, but the real meat of the feature is down here in the mode line uh, at the bottom. A mode line is, is a comment in a file that can set certain Vim features to have certain behaviors just for that file. So it's not useful for setting things related to syntax because then you'd have a, a mode line in every file of that syntax, which would be dumb. So we use mode lines when some configuration only applies to the file in question, in, in this case, our VimRC. So what this does is overrides the folding method and the fold level that I have set more generally, which is done by syntax, uh, and resets it to be done by marker. Uh, the markers are these things here. That's a marker. Um, and then on opening the file, because we've got here uh, set fold level uh, equal to zero, um, that will sort of fold everything up when we first load the file. So we, we've got the, the completely folded sections, and we can see them all on one screen easily. OK, one final thing that you might have noticed um, is the specifics of this command here, line 111. 
Um, this is the remap that allows us to source our vimrc with leader sv, but you'll notice that there's an extra command at the end. Um, the bar token here is just to represent a pipe character. You, you can't have a pipe character in a vimrc and a vim script. I'm not sure why, um, but you can't. Um, but so it just represents that in the same way that a CR represents a carriage return, right? Um, but then the do auto command buff read there is basically there to refresh the mode line because as we source the file, the fold method and the fold level are reloaded from the vimrc, which overrides our mode line. So it sets it back to syntax and therefore all our folds open and the folding is just broken. So what that does is it says after we've sourced it, just in this buffer, um, reload the the mode line. If we're in another buffer, it would just reread it, and it wouldn't it wouldn't have any effect. But in this case, it just refreshes that mode line. Um, so um, a side effect of that is is that when I source it, it will close all the folds, which irritating. But you know, fine, whatever. Okay, I think that's everything. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more Linux and programming videos in the future. Please consider following me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at Callingly Shade in both places. I post tech stuff on Twitter and some WebGL experiments on Instagram if you're into that kind of thing.